all these Ethernet cables, they're the same, right? I mean, after all, they're all used to do the same thing. They're meant to connect devices in your home network to each other. Unfortunately, that's not entirely true. Not all Ethernet cables are the same. And as a result, I've gotten quite a few questions about which cables you should be using in your home network and if the application matters or determines the type of cable you use. In this episode from Network From Home, I'm going to be setting the record straight when it comes to Ethernet cables. We're going to be diving into which Ethernet cables you should be using and if it matters what Ethernet cables you use in different applications. The most common question you see when it comes to Ethernet cables is which category of Ethernet cable you should be using. For those not familiar, the category of Ethernet cable essentially identifies the specifications to which the cable was made. In other words, different categories of Ethernet cables will support different bandwidth or speeds. So what does this mean for your home network? In short, this means that you need to make sure that the category of Ethernet cable you're using can support the internet speeds that your home network is getting. If you make sure this is the case, you won't have any problems. Okay, so let's dive into the different speeds that these categories of Ethernet cables can support. Okay, so the first category of Ethernet cable you should be concerned about is Cat5e Ethernet cables. Cat5e Ethernet cables can support speeds up to one gigabit per second, and Cat5e Ethernet cables can be as long as 328 feet. So that's quite a bit of length to work with there, and one gigabit per second is plenty of bandwidth in most applications. The next category of Ethernet cable that should be on your radar is Cat6 Ethernet cables. Cat6 Ethernet cables can support speeds up to 10 gigabits per second for 180 feet of Ethernet cable length. And for any lengths between 180 feet and 328 feet, these cables can support speeds up to 1 gigabit per second. The next level up here is the Category 6A Ethernet cable. They can support speeds up to 10 gigabits per second for lengths up to 328 feet of Ethernet cable. The next category is Cat7 Ethernet cables. These have very similar performance specifications to Cat6A Ethernet cables. The only difference is that when Cat7 Ethernet cables were established, they didn't have this same standard RJ45 connector at the end of the cable. As a result of that, I suggest that you steer away from these just because any CAT7 cable used in home networks today has been retrofitted to have this RJ45 standard connector. So essentially there's not really much of a difference between CAT6A and CAT7 cables, so I recommend CAT6A cables. Lastly, you're starting to see CAT8 Ethernet cables in home networks now. These support speeds even greater than CAT6 or CAT6A cables, but in my opinion, these are overkill at this point unless you're using them in a data center. Okay, so now that you have this information, this is all well and good, but I'm sure the next question you're asking is, how do I know what category of Ethernet cable I currently have in my home network? We'll have previously made a video that details how to find out what category of Ethernet cable you have. In short, there should be a label on the cable that you can read from, but I recommend you check out that video just so you have a clear understanding where to look. So what category of Ethernet cable should you be using in your home network? Honestly, if you have Cat5e, Cat6, or Cat6a cables, you can't go wrong. At this day and age, even a Cat5e cable can support the vast majority of applications when it comes to bandwidth and internet speeds. If you really want to future-proof your home network, go ahead and buy some Cat6 or Cat6a Ethernet cables. Both of these cables support speeds up to 10 gigabits per second, which far exceeds the internet speeds provided today. If you buy Cat6 or Cat6a cables, you won't have to worry about replacing them anytime soon because they'll support the bandwidth in your home network for a very long time. Another thing to keep in mind when you're buying Ethernet cables for your home network is just to keep in mind that the higher the category of Ethernet cable, in general, the less flexible it is. Here's an example here. Here's a Cat5 Ethernet cable. As you can see, it's super flexible. This is a Cat6 Ethernet cable. 
It's still pretty flexible, but it's not as flexible as the Cat5e cable. So if you have tight spaces or you're putting ethernet cables in your walls, this is something that you just wanna be aware of. Again, with Cat5e or Cat6 cables, you probably won't have any problems, but this is something to just keep in mind. The next question I frequently see is, do you need to use a different ethernet cable depending upon the devices you're connecting in your home network? Honestly, the type of ethernet cable you use for a specific application, it doesn't matter. You can use a CAT6 cable to connect your modem and router, and you could use a CAT5e ethernet cable to connect your laptop to your router, or you could switch them. It really doesn't matter as long as the ethernet cable supports the bandwidth that's required for that application. Just for your information, in the earlier days of IT, there were also different configurations of ethernet cable that you might see today. These two different configurations were straight through ethernet cables and crossover ethernet cables. All these meant these configurations just identified the type of wiring configuration at each end of the ethernet cable. Honestly, if you see either of those labels today, you can essentially ignore it. With today's technology, devices are smart enough to determine the wire configurations in the cable and it won't have any impact on your application. The last question I've seen is, do all ethernet cables in a home network need to be the same category? No, it doesn't matter. You can use a CAT5e and CAT6 ethernet cable all these cables are backwards compatible. They all work with each other. All that you need to worry about is that they support the bandwidth or the internet speed of your internet plan. If you have any additional questions about ethernet cables in your home network, I'd love to hear them, so please drop a comment below. If this video was useful for you or you found this information helpful, please give the video a like. We wanna make sure this video gets shared with as many people as possible so they don't have any problems with their home network. And lastly, if you like this content, you like these types of videos, or you wanna learn more about your home network in general, I invite you to subscribe to the channel. I'll be continuing to put out additional videos that you'll likely find helpful as well. As always, thanks for checking out this episode from Network From Home, and we'll catch you on the next one.